Okay, so I've modeled up some stuff for my building. I kind of spent the afternoon here. I took the demo video from the last time you looked at it, and I, I just had a lot of fun with it and threw some stuff at it. There's a lot of little cool things in here. If you ever want to know how to do any of these, I'll show you. For instance, some of these, these are actually just the text object. And there's a really great tip I love from Ian Hubert where um, uh, he kind of takes and does a lot of little different settings to make these work. I've got a lot of these uh, features like uh, this billboard and, and things like that. And they're actually all relatively simple the way I've constructed them. Um, just using a lot of the tips actually I've shown you how to do in there. For instance, I use those curves like I showed you in the how to model details to make these little extra bits. These are just traditionally modeled out and you can see they're relatively simple when you get close to them. This is again, just a text object I put on top of the mailbox. Everything else is pretty straightforward in terms of how I modeled it. Uh, you'll notice though with the building, if I rotate around, it looks like there's a lot going on. But there's nothing back here because I don't need it. I don't need anything here. I don't need a roof because my viewport is only gonna be here. I built this fire escape and it's not perfect. And in fact, when you get close to it, you realize I'm actually just using what's called a wireframe modifier, which just takes a solid object and, uh-oh, crashed it one second. Save early, save often, as I always say. So worth another save. So as I was mentioning, uh, these are all built using uh, a type of modifier. If I turn on my wireframe, I wonder if wireframe is what's crashing it. So if I turn on my wireframe, um, you can see when all these modifiers are visibly turned off. This is the actual geometry of my scene. Uh, wireframe is a cool thing that just turns whatever I'm doing into like these wires. Then I turn on crease edges and put on a subdivision just to round it out a little bit. And then I created an array so I can stack them. And again, from here, from where I'm seeing it in my scene, it's fine, it has enough detail. Now, in terms of actually like rendering it out, as I mentioned, I really like to have two windows, one that I set up as my uh, render view with my lighting turned on. And um, let's get that wireframe off in here because I definitely don't need that. And I turn everything else off just so I can focus in on this building. And that means that I have, when I take my lights and everything, so I've got a lot of stuff in my scene here, but if I take like my sunlight, it's really easy for me to make adjustments to it in here and see how that's gonna affect the look of the building. I think probably best to rotate just in the Z axis, because again, I can control like where the shadows go. Just something to create a little visual interest with what I'm doing. Um, other stuff like this, again, these, uh, as I mentioned, this model is actually just very simple geometry that I ran through a triangulate, and then a wireframe, and then a bevel. Uh, water tower, when you look up, it was really close, very simple kind of construction, same kind of thing, using a lot of that wireframe to give off scaffolding, do the same thing here with this uh, with this signpost where it's actually just that, and then I, I, I run it through wireframe. And I just put a couple details, a couple little models in there to make it fun, because this is the perspective I want. My street, um, I don't need anything under here because there's nothing under the street. I just made little street parts, gave them just a tiny little bevel at the corners, so that when I'm looking at it, it has a little thing to like kind of catch light. Everything else though is done exactly the same way I showed you in the tutorials. I just kept going with it. Uh, this was this little billboard here. I just found online. Uh, you know, I can show you how to make that because that's a pretty fun thing. If you turn on, um, there's an add-on in here. I think it's images as import images as planes. I'm pretty sure it's turned on by default. If not, you can turn it on there. And if I go to Shift A, I can do image and image as plane. And you remember when I told you I had that Mario and it was not square? Well, the nice thing about this is it'll take whatever I import. So like this little image here, and it'll actually bring it in. Ooh, wrong one, I wanna get image as planes. I wanna get this one. So what it'll do, that's kinda of cool, is it'll actually bring it in as a plane that's scaled to it. And so then I to make it into a billboard, I just made it, I took that image, I made it big, and then I added a solidify modifier. Gave it a little thickness. Now it looks like it's coming through, it's because it's a PNG. I need to go into my shader. And in my shading, I wanna make sure it's not trying to also connect to the alpha. So just cut that out, back to layout, and it won't look transparent. 
Uh, anymore. I don't want that. And then what I can do is change up in my material slot. This is an offset, which means it's going to look at my material slot and say, use whatever is in zero. So this is in the zero position. But if I add like my black paint to the, this is zero and now this is one. And the modifier can say, use the one position and the one position for that. And it's a way I can just automatically generate and add a second material to it. That's what I did up here to do the same kind of deal. Mm. This I must have bumped back a little bit. Just stick it forward a little. Oh, it's the wireframe coming through. Let me turn off wireframe. That's causing some weird hijinks right now. So that way I can get this and now I have like a billboard and all I have to do is build a simple model and throw a wireframe on it. I can get everything else. Everything else is mostly the same. Um, I used on here one of the materials to make my street lights is called an emissive. So the second material, instead of using the standard, which is this principled BSDF, I changed this to emissive, which is this one right here. And it only has the settings for color and strength. So this is like how bright do these lights glow. So depending on the time of day, if it's a nighttime scene, I want them a lot brighter. If it's not, it's a lot softer and smoother. Um, the windows here I changed up a little bit to give me the idea of window blinds. So I have this transparent window over top, a glass material. So you can see if I look at any one of these panels, just showing you some of the cool stuff that I did here. So if I take this bit, you can see it's, I, I just took what was back there and I shift D and duplicated it and moved it. And then I applied this glass material and then the glass material settings down here, you have to change blend mode to alpha blend and shadow mode to alpha hashed so that this alpha will actually change how transparent it is from really transparent to not as transparent. And so it's just a little bit transparent so it shadows things out. And the material right behind it, this part of the window has applied what I'm calling shade material. And if you look at it in the shading tab, I can show you what shade material is actually doing. So shade material, I'm taking in uh, my mapping node and applying it to something called a wave texture. And if you set it to saw and I rotated it in 90 degrees so that it was facing the right direction, it's literally, say 90 degrees, uh, there's the default on this is sine. So it kind of goes up and down and it creates like a smooth wave. Well, by setting it to saw, it sort of curves and it flattens, which is perfect because it looks almost exactly like window blinds. And then I just used a color multiply to set its factor to give it like a little bit of color. And then I ran it through this bump node, which takes the height. It's not really important. This one I can probably do without, but it's just a little extra. I did it too with some, I did that same kind of wave to get this little gold pattern to get a little detail. We take a look at my gold pattern, the similar thing. I use a bunch of different like noises, but I'm using, uh, where's my wave? Yeah, I'm using the wave texture to go into this bump channel if you want to do some detail -y work. It's not necessary, I just want to show you, I love figuring out all the cool things I can do inside of Blender by itself and not have to use a bunch of other programs. So with that, I feel like I'm ready to, you know, give it a nice little render. And so I kind of pick in my time of day, I'm thinking about like a little bit of a twilight. So I maybe want to rotate the angle a little bit flatter, a little bit more parallel, like the sun's going down kind of a thing. So the lines, the shadows are getting pretty long and uh, I can bring up some of this glow. So I made a, a little material here for this emission. Go into shading. And maybe I just take, if you ever can't find anything, you can also go to, uh, there's a home frame, uh, frame all is home. And I can up my strength for these guys here. like so. And when I feel like I got a scene and a layout that I like, always save it. Make sure that uh, I've also picked a more square image because I felt like it framed it up better. So I did 1920 by 1920. I turned on all these guys. I guess I don't need motion blur. Um, and one of the other things I did 
that I want to show you is in the sun here. I went into the camera settings and I turned on, if you turn off shadow, you'll see the sun doesn't cast shadows in here, but there's also something called contact shadows. And if I turn that off, contact shadows add those little shadows of like when two things are up against each other. There's just this little spot where they really, they really hit on the surface. I guess that's not a good spot to show it. I'm trying to see. I guess it's only showing it in here though. Yeah. So it's just those little extra spots where things, like especially you can see up there, really run into each other. So it's nice to have that. I like to leave this in the this one because it's easier to navigate. Uh, and then this can be just my render view because it runs a little faster. Everything else is, you know, a lot of models, relatively simple. Like I didn't do all the little grooves. I didn't go super into detail on this. And if you look up at it really closely on any of this, you can see errors as you get closer. There's like seams that are pretty obvious. You know, this guy doesn't exactly line up like it should. I could fix that. These windows are clearly just like, it's just a black material in front of a glass material. So this nothing's that fancy. Nothing has like fancy reflections or Fresnel, but I'm looking to get this render. That's what I'm trying to get. So this view doesn't really matter as much. It's good to take these shots so people can see the work you did. So like when you're doing your models, give me this shot and then give me two or three of like this shot and give me one of like this shot to give me like a little closer in on some of the interesting features. Like, you know, okay, there's like a billboard up here, but primarily I'm worried about this one. So let's hit it and I'll give it a render. And then I'll show you my compositor setup in here that I used. So inside of the compositor, I ran it through a couple nodes that I was playing with. So I started, um, I like the curves and stuff like that. I added a little lens distortion, but I started with an exposure and a gamma. And you can see I take these very, very little, like this exposure is just deciding, um, I can take these one at a time just by control shift clicking. And we say what it starts with is something like this. It's not a bad image, but if I add a little exposure, I can just bring up the brightness. It feels a little bit more like a camera. Then I can add up something like a gamma. And so the gamma can help me decide sort of, it's almost like a contrast. So if I set a gamma to one, this is the default. And if I start pushing up, you start to get that HDR look to things. Don't overdo it though. It's, it's, I hate, I hate overdone gamma. Like gamma should just be teeny tiny little correction to just add a little drama to our scene. Then I get into the color balance and this is where I kind of get real, I got a little Instagrammy with it, but I really pushed up the blue. Maybe I went too far with some of the shadows. You know, play with the midtones and like I can lift those a little bit to bring a little bit of light into the scene. And then I like to bring something warmer into the highlights. This is, you know, it's it's not I'm not breaking any rules or doing anything innovative. These are pretty typical. Uh, and then I run that all think that whole thing through a lens distortion, and uh, that gives me just a little bit of dispersion to get that idea of um, that like little Fresnel kind of going out. I guess I can't see it now because it's not in the viewer. But this little, um, this little dispersion can give me just a little bit of that uh, RGB scattering. So again, I like to keep it pretty low, pretty subtle, but it gets the idea across. Um, oh, one other thing, and I love how like gives me like the, the light on the street, the shadows, and everything like that. It's 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 really fun. I feel like my con my exposure might be a little too high, so I can always back that off. like that and maybe I pushed my lift a little bit too blue back it off a little bit you know just like really looking at what's in my background deciding how how far I want to go with it because if I go up here it's just it looks a little blown out so I'm trying to avoid that but I still want to create something a little dramatic that seems seems like a nice compromise so uh, one last thing, I'm gonna show you my background image. Uh, there's no background image. I'm gonna show you how to do things like skyboxes next week when we're doing outdoor environments. Cause right now it's all about the building and it's just like immediately surrounding area. And uh, you know, it's about throwing things in there and seeing what you like. But if you come in here to this little setting, by default world has nothing in it. It just shows up black, uh, but we can add a new background. And this lets us set it to, well, just about any color we want. Um, but 
that you see here, one of the things we never, almost never do with a render, and if you look online and you look at like um, models uh, online, they almost never have white backgrounds. Because look at like how much it really, it makes it feel less interesting. It's really blown the whole image out. Although we like think about white as like on paper, it's it's so powerful and it's really scattering through here. In fact, what looks a lot better is just pure black, if anything. So where I like to put this is really, really low. Maybe I give it a little bit of color, but like not too much. Um, something that's been pretty hip lately I see a lot is um, especially like renders for things from um, uh, Cyberpunk. I've seen like them doing like a lot of yellows or even like bright reds or things like that. And that's fine, but like keep them like, like, wow, that like blows your eyes out and it really dominates a lot of the image. So a really good rule is just like pick a good color direction. So maybe I want to keep this a little sepia and a little brown and then just really drop it down so that if someone looked at it, they would say that color is black, but it's just slightly brown and it gives us that opportunity to jump things out. And I like to think about it, like I said, ways of cheating things. See this whole thing up here? They're not connected to anything. These suckers are just floating in there, but like you can't tell from there, but you get the idea that there's lights there. Um, and if I take this sun down in terms of its strength, the lower it goes, the more my nighttime kind of scene comes out. It's kind of cool. Like you can even animate stuff like this if you wanted. Like I could really take it from here at nine and let's, I know this is so out of the scope of what we're doing right now, but I want to do it and I can like key it. So we see that little key shows up. And I can take it to 130 and like, let's really drop it back down. So like, it's, it's like nighttime now. I know this is another, the sun should also be rotating, but I just thought it was kind of cool. To like animate, like it turning to night. It's just kind of neat. I like to have it. Sometimes though, what uh, I'll do with renders like this is I will set, cameras and suns at different positions. So I can just do like a render here and then I can just move the timeline. And now I have my nighttime render. And then I don't have to like change the settings for the sun every time I want to do that if I want to pay a nighttime render. And I can even keep things like the color of it so that maybe like if it goes halfway through, it gets a lot more like orangey, like hazy at nighttime kind of glow. You know, see that too. So it's like midday. And in midday, let's key it as white so it starts white it gets that's uh that get it back to white set that key and then it can go down to here and then maybe at night time it's like a dim blue so that i could have like it's midday and then it's like afternoon. Actually, let's get a little bit more. See that. And then it gets like dark. And so you can key all kinds of things like that to set different stuff. It's just fun. So that's what I want you to do with this week. Think about presenting. Think about the view that you're going to show off and what people are going to see when they look at it any of those things like you said you really look closely at these models they're not that impressive they're relatively simple and it's just about like what looks good at this range don't put too much detail into everything although you're gonna have close-up shots i mean like play any game look at behind the scenes stuff for any movie up close things usually don't look very good we're not trying to make stuff perfect we're trying to make stuff look right and on this first read you're filling in a lot of blanks of information you think there's detail there that there's just not and that's a lot of trickery, and I'm reusing a ton of stuff to get this effect. So um, have fun with it. Play with it a little bit. Try some things out. Model a couple things that you think on the street. Make a garbage bag. There are piles of garbage bags on the street sometimes. There's lots of cool stuff we can do with this. Um, one thing to do to check before you go out on all of these models, go to this mode and turn off X-ray. And I'm going to go into and look for, I'm sure there's going to be something wrong, Face orientation, because this can be really messy for especially our renders, is anything that's red is inverted. And so these are cases where we're gonna shift N, A, shift N, 
that uh, n reconforms normal so sometimes just a lot of these objects can get backwards and that can actually cause some weird um rendering issues that we often don't expect this is fine because it's on the back there but like this is also fine for what i'm doing it's okay that it's it doesn't have thickness i don't expect it to but like this this window right here Oh, it's it's a uh, arrayed. I have these on an array, um, so that that's why. Say all of these. Now these aren't flipping because it it thinks it's fine. So if that's the case, I can hit Alt N and I can flip it manually. Really control it. This one though. Get just these edges. Alt N flip, and then these uh these posts L kind of selects the whole thing. Oh, I didn't get the whole thing. Uh, so L is like linked, and it's right now set to seam. If I hit Shift, uh, it turns off that, so I can hit L, Shift N, and it can get the whole thing. Much better. It's gonna help me control a lot of those. Sometimes you get backwards things. I have these little mailbox guys too. Some of these have some reversed faces that we can reconform. Let's just say everything and just calculate it to the outside. Those ones on the inside are fine because it's not something I'm going to see as much. Take all three of these together. Shift, shift, tab, A, shift, N, recalculate to outside. And then we can go back in and turn off face orientation and no that our model's generally facing in the right direction. So, looking forward to see what everybody comes up with. Post if you got any questions, if there's just anything you're like, how do I do this? How do I make this? How do I figure this out? Or ask me, hey, how did you do that thing in that video? Let me know, and I'd be happy to uh, show a little bit of off. Thanks, everybody. I'll talk to you soon.